Hi, this is Janae from The Itch to Stitch. In this video, I will share tips for a variety of ways you can save an applique name design file in Imbrilliant software. Applique names are very popular projects right now. If the applique font you purchased happens to have VX installation files for use with Imbrilliance, then you can use the lettering tool to automatically merge together your applique letters and then do further editing. Let's take a look at the Rowan baby name gown that Jana stitched. Let me show you how we can create that file in Imbrilliance. I'm going to create a lettering object by clicking the A button at the top. I'm going to be using closer to free um, the three inch size of that applique alphabet. And she used lowercase letters, so I'll just type that R W A N and click set. And there we go. In Brilliance, merge the five applique letters that I need for this design. I'm going to decrease the space between them and then um, center it in my hoop. And um, at this point, if you're running in Brilliance in express mode for free, this is about all you can do. You get the letters positioned where you want, and then you save the design file. Now, when you look at this, you only see one color. But if I click on the color tab, we'll see there are actually lots of color stops in this design, and that's because all of those are applique letters. If we look down here at the bottom right-hand corner, we'll see that there are three different needles or three different thread colors that are used in this design, but there's actually 15 color stops. That's because each it has a placement and a tack down step and a satin step for each letter of this name. So if I go up to File, Save As, I'm going to save it as a stitch file and as a working file. I'll save this as Rowan 3 inch. The working file is what you would do to reopen up this design in Imbrilliance if there's something you want to edit. Like maybe you decide, oh, those letters should be a little bit closer together. You would edit the working file. But if you're ready to sew it, you need to save a stitch file. I'm going to choose PES for my machine and click Save. And now that design file is saved. And again, if you're running in Brilliance in Express mode, that's all you can do. When I open this at my machine, what I'm going to see is 15 color stops where we'll do the placement and tack down stitch, stitch for the R and the satin stitch for the R and move on to the O, which is perfectly fine for this project that Jana stitched because she used five different fabrics and five different thread colors. So stitching the five letters individually is a perfectly fine way of doing this project. But let's take a look at this Luke towel that she also stitched. Notice she used one fabric and one thread color for the entire design. Stitching each of the letters individually is kind of time consuming. So this is where owning and brilliance essentials can be very helpful because we can use some tools and essentials to make the process at the machine faster. So let me create a new page here. I will click the A button to create a lettering object. In this case, I'm gonna type Luke and click set and choose the closer to free four inch alphabet in this case. All right, let me decrease the space between my letters and center. And again, um, because this is a lettering object, I don't have the option to expand or see what's going on. We're just going to trust by looking at the colors that these are applique and each one has a placement and tack down and satin stitch step. So if I save this as a stitch and working file, let me just save this as Luke, four inch. I'm gonna have the same situation that I did with the Rowan design. But if I own essentials, I can use the color sort feature to save time at my machine. All right, this tells me the design page has been reduced by nine color changes. And that's because since none of my letters overlap, it's going to combine all of all the pink steps. So there are four different placement stitches. Those are gonna be combined into one step. There are four different tack down steps. Those will be combined into the second color stop. And then all four of the satin stitches are combined. So I'll click save it. And it suggests taking my working file, Luke 4 inch, and just adding the word sorted at the end, which I like um, having that option, so I'm going to click save. 
Now, you're not gonna see anything change on your screen because we're still in our working file. We are still working with a lettering object where you cannot rearrange the steps while in an object. But if you open that newly saved design file, actually, let's open that first file that we saved. This is how I can show you um, what it would look like at your machine. Now again, I'm, I can open up a design file because I'm running um, essentials. Once you open a design file, then you have the expand button where I can see how that original design file looked. Okay, so it's got the place, tack, and satin for the L, then the place, tack, satin for the U, and so forth. But if I open up my sorted file, when I expand, I only have three color stops. So using the color sort feature, combined the placement step for all four letters and the tack down step and the satin stitch step for all four letters. Let's look at a different project. Let's look at this little sister design. If you look carefully, you will see that the same fabric was used for all the steps, but each letter is outlined with a different satin stitch step. So first of all, let's create that design. It was little sis and this was using um, closer to free, the three inch size. All right, let me decrease the space between the letters. I'll decrease the line space a little bit. Now we don't want to mess with the placement and tack down colors because we want them all to be the same fabric. But if we were to do a color sort, all of those blue steps are gonna be combined into one and it's not gonna allow your machine to stop to allow for a thread change. So I can change those right here and um, we're just gonna have to go in order. So this first blue step would be for the L. Let me scoot this over here a little bit. And um, that was an orange thread. So we change that to orange and we can watch it change on our screen. Then the next one, the I, was a light blue. The second L was yellow. The S was a dark blue. Actually, we'll just leave it the blue that it's set at. The I was white. And the last S was red. All right, so now when I um, use the color sort on this one, it's gonna say it's reduced it by 10 color changes because what it's gonna do is take those six placement steps and combine it to one and the six tack down steps and combine it to one and that's gonna take 12 steps down to just two steps. So let's save this. I'm gonna put little sis sorted. Okay, again, we don't see the change here on our working file, but if I open up that new saved file, we'll see that it's been reduced by a significant amount of color stops because it's going to do the placement stitch for all six letters, tack down all six letters, you trim all those out, and then it will go through and do the satin stitch for the six different letters, allowing for a thread change. Let's go back to that row in example. Yes, we want five different placement stitches, and we want five different tack down stitches, and we want five different satin stitches, but maybe you prefer to do all of your fabric placement and tack downs at the beginning, get all the trimming done before you start satin stitches, especially if you have a multi-needle and you can just kind of hit a button and let it do those last um, five steps yourself. What we could do instead on this one is we can't do anything here in our working file. So what I need to do is open up the stitch file for this one. All right. In this case, the R was pink. We need to make sure that all of our placement stitches are different all our satin stitches are different colors. This one was a green. The W was yellow. The A was brown. The 
and the N was orange. Okay. Now, as this is saved, it's going to do each letter individually. But if we want to cluster all the satin stitch steps at the end, we can drag and drop layers ourselves. So we want to bring this A down. So what I can do is drag it to this point right here. So I've got the little dot and line. And what that's going to do is drop the satin stitch around the A in between the um, steps of the N. And I can do the same thing for the W. Drag this down. And the O and the R. So now if I save this design, it's going to do the placement and tack down for the R and the O and the W. Actually, let's watch it in Stitch Simulator. It's going to do the placement and then the tack down stitch for the O. And so as you can see, it's going to work through each of the letters so that all five of the fabrics are tacked down after you trim. Then you can use the satin stitches. You can run the satin stitch set and we'll do those all at the end. And let me just drag that across. All right, one last idea. Let's say I was going to do a team spirit shirt. So let me choose Rams and let's see, closer to free. Let's do the four inch size. Oh, nope, three. Decrease my space a little bit and center this. Let's say I wanted to alternate the colors. So I want the R and the M to be blue, but I want the A and the S to be yellow. So let's come down here and change that satin to yellow. And then change the S to yellow. If I were to save a color sort right now, it's still going to combine all my placement and tack down steps, only allowing for one fabric. If I want to have two different sets of placement and tack down stitches, then I need to also change the placement and tack down for the yellow letters. So what I'm going to do is just choose a slightly different color pink and a slightly different color green for the first yellow letter and for the second letter. So a different color pink, but still the same pink that I used on the last yellow letter. Same thing for the green. All right, so now what I have is six different colors because I have a specific placement tack down and satin color for my R and M, and then a different set of placement tack down and satin for my A and S. So now when I do my color sort, let's make this Rams sorted. When I open up that design file, instead of four individual letters, I have two sets of two letters. So it'll do the R and the M, and then the A and the S. And again, like I did on Rowan, if I want to do all of my satin stitches at the end, then I could grab this step and slide it down here. So it'll tack, and I can tack and trim all of my fabrics and then do my satin stitches at the end. Okay, so when you own Embrilliance Essentials, you have lots of tools at your fingertips to customize your applique text designs so that it is more user friendly at your embroidery machine. Thank you for watching. Please check out our other videos for more helpful tips.